Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be answering the question, what is a k-core of a graph? This is a viewer-requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave your requests down in the comments. And with that said, let's just get straight into the lesson. And before we pay this beautiful graph much attention, let's go ahead and jot down the definition of k-core. Here is our definition. The k-core, and we're generally allowing k to be any integer, the k-core of a graph g is the maximal subgraph h of g such that the minimum degree of h is greater than or equal to k. So every vertex in h is adjacent to at least k other vertices. And notice that we say the k-core of a graph. For a given value of k, the k-core of a graph is unique. This uniqueness of the k-core follows pretty easily from the definition. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video dedicated to a proof of that, but I'll leave it to you to justify to yourself once you're done watching this lesson. To help clarify this definition, let's just jump into some examples. For starters, let's look at the zero core of this graph. By definition, the zero core of this graph is the maximal subgraph such that every vertex in that subgraph has degree at least zero. And we quickly realize that every vertex in every graph has a degree of at least zero. So the zero core of this graph is actually the whole graph itself. We can keep every single one of these vertices and their adjoining edges in the zero core because every single one of these vertices has a degree of at least zero. And this is certainly the maximal subgraph with this property because there are no other vertices or edges in the graph that we could add. This is the entire graph. All right, for your convenience, I've copy and pasted the zero core over there on the right, nice and tiny so it doesn't get in the way. Now let's look at the one core of this graph. By definition, the one core of this graph is the maximal subgraph such that the minimum degree of that subgraph is greater than or equal to one. So if the minimum degree of the one core has to be one or greater, that means we only have to worry about vertices with degree zero. We only have to get rid of the isolated vertices. So if we go ahead and erase those isolated vertices, what we have now is a subgraph of the original graph such that the minimum degree of this subgraph is greater than or equal to one because no vertex in this newly created subgraph has a degree less than one. All right, so that's pretty nifty. Let me go ahead and put this over to the right for you to look at if you care to give it another glance. So we've seen the zero core of this graph and the one core of this graph. Let's dig in to the two core. Notice that I didn't revert this back to the original graph. We're still looking at the one core. That's because the same vertices that couldn't be in our one core certainly can't be in the two core because every vertex in the two core has to have a degree of at least two. So if a vertex couldn't be in the one core, it certainly can't be in the two core. So we'll go ahead and erase those. Now, what other vertices can't be in the two core of this graph? Well, this vertex here certainly can't be because it has a degree of one. So we'll erase that vertex and its incident edge. But now, since that vertex can't be in the two core, this vertex can't be in the two core either. It did have a degree of two, but since this vertex can't be in the two core, this vertex would have a degree of one. So that can't be in the two core either. Let me just go over that one more time in case you didn't follow. By definition, every vertex in the two core of a graph has to have a degree of at least two. Therefore, we know that this vertex with degree only one cannot possibly be in the two core. So we can confidently erase it. However, that means that this vertex now only has degree one as well. So it can't be in the two core either. And this is a sort of basic algorithm that works to find the k-core of a graph. 
to find the two core, we're just deleting every vertex that doesn't have degree at least two. Once there's no more vertices to delete, we know we've pinned down the two core. So are there any other vertices that can't be in the two core? Well, this one certainly can't be either. It has a degree of only one. So we'll erase that. This vertex here though, it did have a degree of three, but since we erased this vertex, it now has degree only two, but that is perfectly fine. So this vertex gets to stay. Besides that, the only other vertices that we can't have in the two core are these two down here. They both have degree one. So we'll erase both of those. Now, every vertex left in this subgraph has degree at least two. And so this is the two core of the graph. Now let's go ahead and do that copy paste magic. Now let's take a look at the three core of this graph. By looking at these K cores with higher and higher values of K, we are finding the most strongly interlinked sections of this graph or of this network, if you like to think of graphs as networks. All right, let's try to go a little quicker this time. So for the three core, we just have to delete every vertex in this subgraph that does not have degree at least three. This vertex here has degree two, so we'll go ahead and erase that. Now, this vertex also has degree two. That's less than three, so that gets erased. Well, what about this vertex here? That's got degree two, that's not gonna do. We'll erase that. This vertex here also has degree two. That's not enough, that gets erased. And now this vertex also has degree two, so that's gonna have to get deleted as well. Now, what we have left are two complete graphs on four vertices. Every vertex remaining in this subgraph has degree at least three. So this is the three core of the graph. And just as a quick counterexample, let's say we erased this edge here and this one here. This is no longer the three core because it is not the maximal subgraph with minimum degree at least three. It's not maximal because we could make it bigger, so to speak, by adding in those two edges that are in the graph G. And so K cores are always vertex induced subgraphs. You're never going to just leave out an edge if you have its two end vertices. So anyways, this is our three core. Now is a good time for me to point out that in our definition, we do not say that the K core of a graph has to be connected. However, some authors will define the K core as being connected. And if a K core of a graph has to be connected, then K cores lose their uniqueness. In this case, if we were using the definition that says K cores have to be connected, then this whole subgraph could not be the three core because it is a disconnected subgraph. Instead, each one of these subgraphs individually would be a three core. So just be aware that the definition of K core does sometimes include connectedness. As usual with many topics in graph theory, you just gotta be careful of different definitions. With that said, let's do our copy and paste. Finally, we move on to the four core of this graph. And remember by this graph, I mean the original one we started with, which is the zero core. So to find the four core, just like we've been doing, we have to delete every vertex that doesn't have degree at least four. And in this case, that's every single vertex that's left in this subgraph. No vertex has degree four. Every vertex in this graph has degree less than four. So they all go away. In this case, we might say that the four core of this original graph is the null graph, the graph that has no vertices and no edges. However, by some definitions, this is not actually a graph. So we might just say that the four core of this graph does not exist, DNE. And of course, the same thing would be true if we looked at any higher value of K for this same graph. So that, my friends, is what the K core of a graph is. And it's a very interesting topic. There's a lot more interesting properties and whatnot that we could discuss concerning K cores. But for this lesson, I really just wanted to focus on the basic understanding of what a K core is and a process for finding them. And if this topic interests you, I recommend playing around with K cores a little bit yourself to find some of the interesting basic properties that they have. Also, there's a link in the description to a good paper on K cores, and it's from that paper directly that I got this graph.
I thought it made a great example for introducing K-Cores, so I had to use it. And with that said, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Blind as bats, it's a sight to see. Choirs in four-part is home.